Well, hello, everybody. This is Donna McCauley, and we're back in the DM Quilting Studio. And today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new pattern. This is one that um, I'm not going to say is hot off the presses. I'm going to say it's still under the sewing machine. And so we have here um, kind of a fun little way that we're going to use our uh, DM Quilting Daisy templates. Now, this is a set of templates that was released. Let me pull this other piece out. Was released a little while back. And with that set of templates, um, you have a complementary pattern, which is right here for a centerpiece mat. It measures about 22 by 24, something real close to that, and has lots of instructions for lots of different ways that you can use the daisy templates and so this is the complementary pattern that is um, available to you when you order your templates and um, through the university so let's move that aside what we have here is a brand new pattern now this is the basket of daisies and it is going to, if you wish, utilize the uh, template technique, which is what I've done here. I'm not finished yet with it, but if you don't want to do it that way, then just simply quilting really looks nice too. This will have all of the information that you need as part of our virtual event that's coming on the 28th of the month. And so we have just a couple of weeks left for that. There's time to sign up and get your um, time slot all, all squared away. So this will create a 25 and a half by 22 and a half uh, centerpiece mat. It uses the daisy templates. So let's pull those over and take a little look at them just for a minute. There are three sizes now to the templates. There is a three and a half, a four and a half, and a five and a half inch size of the daisies. Once we get through looking at this material, then we will do a little bit of stitching here too today. So I hope that you reserve a spot and will join us for this virtual event that's going to be um, coming up. We had a few little technical difficulties and so I don't have Sarah on here with me able to share information. And so it's um, kind of been crazy around here. You'll notice that on my templates, I have some pink tape on the back here. This isn't anything you have to worry about. I was working on some very light colored fabric and had some light colored threads and with the etch lines, they just kind of disappeared for me. So I just put a little piece of glow tape back behind there to emphasize where my stopping and starting and alignment points are. And of course we have our stable tape on there as well. So these three templates are the ones that you need to use. Also, a straight away or a 12 inch arc will work just fine in order to create the basket here, which is down here, and then some of the basting stitches and things like that too. So it isn't real template uh, crazy. We just have a few that we're going to be working with, and this will do it for us. So we also will be using an eight point crosshair. So it doesn't really matter what size it is. If you have the eight and a half inch, that's great. If you have um, a 12 and a half or even one of the little minis, 
whatever you have in the eight point uh, crosshair marker is good. If you don't have that, then in the class we'll even work with that. What I'm going to do in the class, in addition to instruct you on how to go through the process of making this piece here, is also take a look at some options where we could do some applique. So when we use the template method, we are applying our fusible to the back side of our top fabric. And then we have a second layer in there. Once our stitching is completed, then we cut away parts of our top layer. But we're also going to take a look at a method where we are applying our colored or printed fabrics, such as all of these combinations here, on top of our background fabric. So we're doing it in a little bit of a reverse way. We'll still be quilting it with templates and then doing a little bit of cutaway, but it's going to be completely different. So that's gonna be kind of fun, I think, to learn another option to how you can go about creating color and different um, designs or patterns of color within your quilting. So let's real quickly just take a, a look at what we have here. Like I said, this is not completed yet, so you're not getting the full effect, but you can see a little bit about what we've done. There is some quilting with just the same color thread as our background fabric, and then we have, um, all of our little daisy bouquet. So this, because of the colors, may not necessarily look like daisies, but we use the daisy template. So whatever colors that you had in your selection um, would work nicely. It just becomes a real pretty uh, floral bouquet. You can see I have more over here that have not been cut yet. I will end up cutting away all of these and do some more thread work down here on my basket and a little bit more background quilting as well. So you're gonna have to come to the class on the 28th and check it out and see what the finished project looks like because it's going to be a secret until that time. So let's go over to the machine now and stitch out one of these daisies and see just how easy it is to use. I have already pre-marked a quilt sandwich with my eight point crosshair and I have a rotation pin in the middle and so let's um, move things around just a little bit and do some quilting. So I don't have anyone monitoring the questions here today, and I'm not sure if I can even get to them uh, to see them myself real quick like. Okay, I see that we do have a few people on here that are responding. One thing I want to tell you is that we will be giving away uh, during today's event or after today's event here, the live presentation of our basket of daisies, someone who comments, likes, and shares is going to receive one of the patterns. So be sure to post this information and spread it around so you can be eligible uh, for that free pattern to you and access to the class, I do believe. So let me make some camera adjustments and I hope I don't make you sick in doing that. Don't take off, it'll be just a minute here.
bring you down so you can see a little better. I'm going to remove the tape and I think we'll use the five and a half inch daisy template for our uh, stitching today. Oops, hang on. Sometimes when I bump the wrong thing, everything breaks loose. So I see real quickly that there is a question on how would we go about enlarging uh, the quilt. And yes, with the pattern that you will be receiving. So you're going to want to register now for the class to save your spot. If you don't have the daisy templates, you might want to even get them on order. If you do have them, um, we're not going to have this particular pattern doesn't take a lot of fabric, but I will have in the instruction how to increase it all the way up to a baby quilt. And we will take a look at some of those things so that you can enlarge it yourself. We can do the template method or applique or both or just the quilting. Sometimes when we are using different colors of thread only, that is enough in order to create the look that we want. So let me play with these lights just a little bit to see if we can get rid of some glare. Sometimes that creates more trouble than it's worth. I think that right there is probably as good as we're going to get. So what I have in position, this is the five and a half inch uh, template. I'm going to use it today only because you can see a little better. I really like the smaller sizes though. And so in this particular basket of daisies, the way they all are used, all three of them, in the center part, which is filling the basket, and then around the edges, too. So they're lots of fun to work with. There is a little bit of thread burying involved in this because we just really can't too easily go from one to the next. I was just kind of looking at that to see if there's an easy method, and I... I just don't know how that would, would work. Um, so unfortunately, this is what we have to do. Now, I'm going to rotate this around so you can see where we are. This is upside down. The template is on my rotation pin. My vertical center is aligned right on my um, one of my eight marks. You'll notice that down here, is a circle and that is we will actually end up stitching that circle that is the size of it and will fit right on top of our uh, stitches so this will create a one inch circle right in the middle but you'll see there are diagonal lines and others around and so those help with alignment here we have our center vertical is right on our mark line, but the diagonals line up on one of the other mark lines. And so because we're working with fabric and it's woven, it does have some flexibility to it and it will give and move on us. And so sometimes when you mark, everything could be perfect to begin with, but when you start stitching, you might be off just the hair one way or another. And so these lines just kind of help you 
uh, know that you're in the general direction of where you need to be. If you're off slightly, it's not usually uh, vital, but that just kind of helps you see what you're doing. And when you're stitching around on the back side of your machine, like we would here, I know you can't see the template because it's behind the machine, but using these little lines, cross lines, within our circle to help with our alignment is like a secondary helper for us. So let's turn this around. And we will line up right on our marked line. And I'm going to lower my foot. Now this template, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there is a little stop location right here at the A where it comes around and you can actually feel where that is. So we are going to hold on to that top thread, drop the needle, bring it back up, and I'm going to use my thread tweezers that have the, the long pointed nose and reach inside that foot and grab that thread and then put the foot back or the needle back down. Now I'm not going to um, worry about those threads. I'm going to hang on to them so we don't get tangled up. Normally I like to stitch with both my threads underneath the foot, but they'll end up there anyway. I'm going to take a couple of little tiny stitches, not exactly in place, but almost in place, and that will kind of secure them a little bit. I will stitch all the way around. And once I get over here, now I'm going to grab my threads and get them out of the way because I found when I have to bury them, if I've run over them and stitched on top of them, uh, it's just a lot harder to do. So I'm going to put them underneath my template. And now they hopefully will stay out of the way. So that's a little tricky to do. I keep one hand on the template at all times just so I don't move anything. We're going to come all the way down into the parking area and come right back out keeping our foot touching the edge of the template. And we're going to come back and just about where the line is here at the B is where we're going to stop. Now, we may need to go up or back um, a stitch or two just so we can uh, align correctly after we've rotated. So we'll now turn the template. Our foot is at A. We should be able to line up on our marked line. If you can't get to your marked line, then you stitch a little too far and need to back up. And in order to do that, you just bring the template back over here and go back one or two stitches. And then when you reposition, you should be right at that point and able to line up. So let's see, I'm kind of close. As we stitch around, we will automatically form our circle. So go all the way to the parking edge uh, before we stop and go the other direction. Don't forget, you want to comment, like, and share on here so that you can be in the drawing or in, in the eligibility for the free class. What's really kind of fun with these particular templates is you don't always have to make a full set of eight rotations you can do uh, even 16 or more 
we can do some eyelashing in between. Some of those samples are available in the complementary pattern. If you have not downloaded that yet, you want to make sure that you do. Come back to the B location, and we're going to turn in the template. So it should line up for you. You cannot see if I don't turn the fabric around in a quilt you're working on up here. You've got it puddled up onto your machine table, and of course you're not going to pivot that. But if I don't do it here, you cannot see what I'm doing. And I just really want you to see how easy this is to use and how nicely it lines up. Come right back into the parking area and out. And stop at the B. Now, if daisies aren't your thing, and now here's what I'm going to stop talking for a minute. I'm going to show you. I'm just a little bit short of where my marked line is. I don't know if you can tell that on the camera. So I will put the template back over up against the edge of my foot and I'm going to go back one stitch. Now when I bring it back into position you can see that I line up a lot better. So for those of you out there watching, um, these daisies have been around for a little while, and I know that there are quite a few people that have used them because I've seen some pictures. But for the rest of our viewers, what do you think? Did you have uh, trouble working with them? Did you find them easy to use? They are available in all the thicknesses for um, high shank, low shank, and also long arm thickness. Sometimes some of my long arm gals have a little bit of a question about the thread slot. And so what we have found on those machines that may not have a presser foot lifter in the back, you can raise push it up just a little bit to come in and out around that thread slot. It's not wide enough for the foot to travel through, which would kind of defeat the purpose there of helping uh, you maintain smoothness in your stitching. As we finish our last rotation line, we also complete our circle. So let's see what happens here. If we come back out now, and let's just not take this out. We have a, we'll take the template off. Let's take a look at that. So we have our daisy has been completed. We could do lots of different things at this point. If you wanted to do some kind of free motion work, you could. If you wanted to do fill work of another type, whether it be small circles or uh, just simple squirrels, or swirls, not squirrels, swirls, um, you could do all kinds of things in there. It has a big enough space that it's actually usable. Put this back on our pin. Now let's just go ahead and see what happens when we turn and move the template so that we are just touching the edge here of our uh, previous stitches. Now we're going to repeat again. And stop this time at 
the stitches on our next uh, petal over. We have to go all the way back down. So this one is going to be a little bit bolder because we're double stitching that whole section. Now we're going to turn our template and by having that parking garage down in there that lets us have the space in order to rotate the template while our needle is in place. We're going to rotate again so that we're right on the edge of the template at the edge of our stitches. Come back out around our circle. And come to the previous stitches. The first set that we come to, we're not going to cross them, and go back. So this is kind of a partial offset echo. And when we come back down, we're going to stop with our needle down just about in line with our mark line here so that we can now pivot our template and stop as soon as we get to that thread over here. And we're just barely covering that. I don't know if you can see that at all. So we're using our template that's already in place on our rotation pin and creating another part of a different design element still using the daisy template. Stop at the rotate or the alignment line. So if you have trouble backtracking, this is a pretty good way to improve your skill. Don't take your hands off of the template or the fabric. Keep them in place. Stop when you get to your end point and simply go back the other way. You should be able to stitch right on top of where you were. As long as you don't move that template, everything should stay in place. So if you like doing the template quilting, something like this would give you a few more little loops and turns inside your uh, pattern so that you would have some other cutting options. But it's just kind of pretty all by itself without even doing that. So you can register and sign up for the virtual class um, on the So Steady website as well, I think, on their Facebook page also. And some of the different stores also have it available, so you might even get an email from some of those uh, vendors. If you don't want to participate in the class, then your option after the event is held to purchase the pattern will be available for you at that time. It will not be available before then.
So by attending the event, you will be provided with the pattern on the day of the event. And of course, there will be uh, some fun things and I'm sure probably a couple of giveaways too. So here we are. I'm going to stop right at my rotation uh, alignment mark and remove this template. So I don't want to cut my thread, but we can take a look and see how that works. And I'm going to scan real quickly and see if there's any comments or anything I need to respond to. Oh, Peggy is asking a question about recommendations for the accent fabric to go inside the layer for the cutout. I like to use, and that's a very good question. I'm glad that you asked that. I like to use um, a petite fabric because it's a tighter weave. It's been processed a few extra times, and so with that, it's going to just be tighter. The way they make it, it's, I'm not exactly sure why. It might start out different. But I like using a batik fabric inside when I can, partly because it does have that real tight weave. If you put batik on the outside and then you have the fusible product on the back of it, it can be a little tricky uh, to make those first initial snips in getting in to do the cutaway. And then if you have a woven fabric on the inside, it's real easy to snag that and cut it open. So as far as um, a brand of fabric or anything like that, that part is whatever you like. But I have found that having the batik fabric uh, sometimes offers a little bit better option for you if it's on the inside. Now I have placed our two or three and a half inch uh, daisy template. And let's see what we can do with it. I'm still needle down in my circle of the five and a half. So this little guy has a smaller size circle. You can see right here, it goes down um, incrementally with the templates. So we will have to do a little bit of stitching to get to it. Let's just go ahead and line it up with our alignment mark but I'm going to travel stitch on my circle until I touch the edge of the template. Now I'm going to come down and I'm in the parking area for this little one and I'm going to come out. I'm not starting at A because we're already working with a different um, part of a design. So I will stitch this this time only, I will stitch the whole interior. So I can get back down to my center circle. And now I will stitch that part of it and come out to my B location. So that I can rotate my template over to A line up on my mark so this is going to give us a real small circle on the inside there but that's okay 
Now we'll rotate. In fact, we have a few extra sets of lines down there, so you have to kind of pay attention just a little bit. This is going to end up looking more like a camellia than it does a daisy. But I like to give you as many different options for using the templates as what is reasonable for how they function. Let's rotate again and turn our template So you'll notice I didn't even really stop. I just went all the way down into the parking area and came right back out, maintaining the same speed on my machine as I uh, went in and came back out. That will help you with your stitch length. If you're having trouble with that accuracy, sometimes that can help. You don't have to go fast, and sometimes you have better stitch formation if you don't go real fast. So here we are, not able to get to the line, so that means I went too far past the B. So let's just back up, and now we're in the right spot. The foot actually fits better at the A location, but I can line it. So instead of having to force your fabric and the template so it looks like you're lining up, just back up or go forward a little bit to correct your positioning. And now we're almost finished. We should connect over here and come right down and finish the inside of our little circle. Now I see I need to go ahead and rotate that around just a little bit because I missed part of it here. And we have kind of a mess in the middle, but that's okay. This is just a testing sample. So let's take it off and remove the pin so we can see what we did. And I'm going to just cut that thread and pretend we just buried it. And so here we are. We have the five and a half on the outside with the offset echo using the five and a half. And then we stitch the three and a half inside. We could have used the four and a half and moved it over and had some other different um, options in our rotations with these three templates. So there's three different sizes, and that makes it pretty functional, I think. Started out um, with only the five and a half, thinking that um, I liked the way it worked so much that having the smaller ones would just kind of benefit. This little one is great for a four inch cornerstone or something like that. And anytime you're using thread that matches the same as your fabric, what you're going to get is the texture, not so much the thread or the image that you've stitched. So let's see where we are. And Take this light away a little bit so you can see what we did. Oh, it looks like we have Sarah on here who has posted a sign-up link for you right in the comments. So that really 
really is helpful, and I'm glad she was able to join us and do that. So I'm going to look forward to seeing everyone. Let's go back and take a look at the project real quick, like, uh, just for a minute. After you see how easy it was to do, stitch out those daisies. And this is, let's turn some lights off. Sometimes they are not our friend. So here we have, I have, it's a fairly light colored uh, batik fabric inside my, behind my first layer. But what's happening with the light, my top layer is kind of a uh, light tan cream color, but it reflects so much of the light that, that it just creates a glare. So you can see the definition of the different daisies. If you had a solid fabric or one with less uh, color blending, then you're going to see more of um, the pattern. I like to use a thread for my template temp, uh, patterns that matches my fabric, my accent fabric. When I, down here, you probably can't even tell it. Here is one pattern but my thread is very light. It matches my background fabric. So you don't even see that. You can see when I turn it here, you can see it this way, but as far as the thread showing up, it doesn't show up at all. So that's why when I'm doing Templi, I like to have my thread to match closer with my accent fabric so that when these little pieces where they're cut away, there's about an eighth of an inch uh, section in there or a tiny bit more, it's going to have that thread that blends um, with this. If I have thread that matches my background fabric or my top layer, it just doesn't quite define the outline shapes as well. And I just, I personally think that this is a better way to go. Whether it's a metallic thread, I have some embroidery thread here that I use. Uh, whatever you have that you want that works with your fabric. So let's get it together and um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks for this class. So thanks everyone for joining in. I look forward to sharing this information with you in deeper detail. This is Donna McCauley saying goodbye. I will go through the comments and the questions, and if there's anything um, I need to respond to, I will do that after the program. Thank you. Bye-bye.